you've got upper back or rhomboid pain, which is right in this area here, watch this video to learn the three most common root causes of this pain and four unique exercises to fix this pain for good. Hey, it's Coach E from Precision Movement, and today we're gonna to talk about upper back and or rhomboid pain, and we're gonna talk about some very common root causes, and we're gonna go through four new and unique exercises that will help you to eliminate the rhomboid pain by addressing the root causes. So if you like learning why you do things and learning new and unique exercises, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell for notifications so that we can stay connected. Root causes. Why do we get rhomboid pain, which is pain right in this area, the muscles right in here? Number one, can you fill in the blank there? This is the levator scap or levator scapuli muscle. The levator scapuli muscle runs from the head, the skull bone, right down and inserts into the scapula. And as the name implies, it elevates the scapula. But oftentimes when it's short and tight, when we have poor posture like that, it can become weak, it can become stiff and restricted. And when that happens, the rhomboids can try to compensate for that levator scap that is not working properly. And I found a study that really illustrated this well. The study was titled, Levator Scapula and Rhomboid Minor Are United. And it was published in 2022 in the journal, Annals of Anatomy. That's not annals of anatomy, you dirty dogs. In this study, the researchers dissected cadavers, that's dead bodies, and they found that the rhomboid minor and levator scapula muscles are interconnected and enclosed by connectives. That's connective tissue like fascia. As you can see here, with both muscles having a similar line of action and inserting into the scapula, if one of those muscles isn't working like the levator scapula, the rhomboid is in the best position to compensate, resulting in overuse of the rhomboid and pain and trigger points. So that's the first potential root cause. The second is one of my favorite muscles, the serratus anterior. The serratus anterior, it's often known as the boxer's muscle because it does protraction of the scapula. But one function that I think is more important than protraction and especially implicated when people have shoulder pain is posterior tilt of the scapula. So this, my right hand is my right scapula. Posterior tilt is like that. If I had a cup of water on top of the scapula, posterior tilt would be dumping the water behind me. Anterior tilt would be dumping the water in front of me. So posterior tilt of the scapula provides scapular stability Whenever you're doing any arm movements, lifting something up overhead, doing a tennis serve, whatever you're doing with your arms and your shoulders, the serratus anterior muscle must be functioning properly to keep good alignment of the scapula so that the head of the humerus, that upper arm bone, can move around without pinching anything. If the serratus anterior isn't working well, then because of the anatomy and the close relationship between the rhomboid and the serratus, you can see here in this image, that they're right, right beside each other and they basically insert, they both insert right on this medial border of the scapula. If the serratus anterior isn't working well, the rhomboid can, again, just like for the levator scap, try to compensate. So we gotta make sure the serratus anterior is working properly. Finally, number three, what is this? This is thoracic spine. If your thoracic spine is stiff, and you're in really poor posture and you can't get out of it because those deep muscles aren't working, then that can create upper back or rhomboid pain. You might get trigger points in those muscles. And the reason why is because number one, those muscles will be lengthened, the rhomboids will be lengthened, so they'll be stretched. And over time, if they're stretched all the time, they'll get weak. And then when you need them, they're weak, they're too weak to do what you need them to do, and they're overworked. So it's just like if you're to do a thousand bicep curls, you're gonna get sore. If you're in poor posture, it's like you're doing a thousand bicep curls throughout the day. You're just working those rhomboids throughout the day. They're gonna get sore and tense and you're gonna get trigger points and they're just gonna feel all stiff and nasty. So we've gotta make sure that the thoracic spine has good mobility 
and functions correctly. Now here's another study that illustrates this point and the title of this study tells you what it's all about. The title is Effects of Thoracic Spine Manipulation. So thoracic spine manipulation is pushing on the thoracic spine in order to improve its mobility, specifically into extension. On pressure pain sensitivity, that's the sensitivity to pushing into the rhomboid muscle and active trigger points in that muscle. And it's a randomized control trial. And there are two groups, one received just physio, the other received thoracic spine manipulation and physio. And the results were that the thoracic spine manipulation group showed a greater decrease in pain in the rhomboids and a higher level of pressure that could be tolerated when poking into the muscle, meaning it's less sensitive. So this just goes to show how important thoracic spine mobility is to decreasing pain in the rhomboids. So those are three common root causes. There could be more, but these are very common problems that people have, especially in our society these days, that can contribute to upper back and rhomboid pain. So what do we do about it? Well, the first thing is, if you're feeling stiff and tight in the rhomboids, a lot of people will go to static stretching as the first thing to do. But that's something that we do very, very sparingly. Instead, and it might feel or seem counterintuitive, what you want to do is activate the rhomboids, really fire those muscles up. What you find when you do that is that the tension just releases and it feels better. Your body knows that the muscle's working, it just releases. So a good way to do that is with a bent over rhomboid row, just an isometric movement. For this, you just hinge over at the hips. First movement is retract the scapula, so pinch the shoulder blades together really pinch hard and then from there keep them pinched and it's like you're doing a rowing type exercise and you keep pinching as hard as you can driving the elbows up towards the ceiling but thinking more shoulder blades together keep those muscles on as you release and if you need a break from the hinge you can or if you're okay you're comfortable in that hinge stay down there so again the first movement is retract the scapula Squeeze those shoulder blades together, keep them pinched tight, and row. And keep pinching the shoulder blades together, pretending that you're lifting a bar up. Breathing, hold for about 10 seconds, and then keeping the muscle activation on of the rhomboids in the upper back. Bring the arms back down to the floor. Repeat that for three to six reps. Hold it for about 10 seconds while you're breathing. And that isometric activation alone could help to dissipate some of that rhomboid pain that you're experiencing. But this is kind of like a Tylenol. It's just a symptom that we're masking with the isometric. We're playing with some neural mechanisms there. So we want to get to the root causes. The first technique I'd like to share with you is the segmental thoracic mob. Now, this isn't just a passive extension over a foam roller. We've got some active components in it that will help to get muscles firing up and help to mobilize your th thoracic spine into extension. And instead of doing this one, I'm just gonna share a video from our ROM Coach mobile app, which you can check out down below, and you can see how this is done. The segmental thoracic mob is an active mobilization for your thoracic spine, which is really important for preventing and fixing that hunchback posture. For this, you'll need a foam roller or a yoga block. When you do this move, make sure that you're not moving too fast and don't use any momentum. Just move under control. You're gonna start by placing a block at your lower thoracic spine. And then you're gonna flex and extend over the block under control three times, keeping the lower part of your spine, your lumbar spine, your lower body stationary. After flexing and extending, you're gonna side bend three times Again, trying to keep the lower part of your spine stationary. When you're done that, move the block to another segment of your thoracic spine and repeat. Make sure you're trying to relax your neck muscles, your chest muscles as much as possible. Keep moving the block until you've hit the whole thoracic spine. So you do those movements in four to five areas of the thoracic spine, basically 
from here to here, and you're gonna to help to mobilize into extension and activate some of those deep muscles. Next up, a technique that I love, especially doing throughout the day when I'm feeling a little stressed, got deadlines. It's called the wall neck side bend. And this is in wrong coach as well, but I'm just gonna show it to you here right now. Just get back onto a wall, touch your, your butt, your shoulder blades, and your head. And from there, you're gonna match your movements to your breathing. So inhale, and then exhale as you bring ear to shoulder. Hold it for a couple seconds, and then inhale back to the neutral. And then exhale, other side. Hold it for two seconds, keep activating the muscles. Inhale on the way back up. So it's exhale on the way down, hold for two seconds, then inhale on the way up. Exhale on the way down, hold for two seconds, inhale on the way up. This technique is really great because it lengthens all of the lateral neck muscles, including the levator scap, and it activates all of the lateral neck muscles, including the levator scap. So we're basically stretching the levator scap, we're activating or strengthening the levator scap, and that's how you get started on the path to correcting weakness, dysfunction of that muscle that will eventually lead to fixing the root cause of this pain. For that technique, five reps, two second hold on either side. So that's five reps per side. Or if you wanna just count, count up to 10 and hold it for about two seconds. And key there is to match the breathing to the movement. The fourth and final technique that I'd like to share with you today is called the dissociation technique for shoulder extension, dissociating from anterior scapular tilt. It's just a very specific nomenclature that I use. It's very common in the ROM Coach app. You'll see, you can get it on Apple and Google. But this technique dissociates this movement, shoulder extension, from this movement, anterior scapular tilt. So whenever people extend their shoulders, the common habitually associated movement pattern is to anteriorly tilt the scapula, like that. We're gonna break that pattern, and by doing this, we're gonna really fire up the serratus anterior muscle, which does the opposite of anterior scapular tilt, talked about this already, it does posterior scapular tilt. So I'm, this is another one that I'm going to show you. It's in ROM coach, but I'm going to show it to you right here. Got a little tweak that I've come up with recently. Start off, really bad posture. Round the shoulders forward, tilt the scapula anteriorly, jut the head forward, just nasty, gross posture. From there, extend the shoulders, keep that bad posture, and then you're going to try to keep extending the shoulders, keep lifting the arms up, while straightening up and posteriorly tilting the scapula. So extend the shoulders up, trying to touch the hands back together. Focus on posterior scapular tilt, sucking the shoulder blade, the bottom of the shoulder blade into the body. Keep retracting, pinching the shoulder blades together, breathing, and then keep that muscle activation on as you return to neutral and then gradually let go of everything. Don't just get there and then oh, fall out of it. We wanna control through the full range of motion. So again, I'm gonna show you this angle, bad posture. Extend the shoulders, straighten up and posterior tilt the scapula. Keep extending, lifting the arms up, trying to pinch the shoulder blades back and down. Lifting the arms up, trying to touch the hands behind my back, touch my elbows behind my back. Chin tucked, posterior tilt, posterior tilt, posterior tilt while you're breathing. Keep the activation on and hands back down to your sides and gradually release the muscles. Dissociation techniques, these are very unique techniques that we've come up with. They're great for breaking habitually associated movement patterns and activating muscles. When we break these patterns, we need to activate different muscles to break those patterns by definition. So for this technique, we're breaking this movement pattern and in doing so, we're gonna activate the serratus anterior. It's a great exercise. This muscle is so important. You need to be able to do this technique and get that muscle firing. Five reps, about a 10 second hold. Make sure you're breathing when you're holding 
and you're activating. You're not just hanging out here. I'm just hanging out here. This is no, I'm not trying at all. But now I'm activating, I'm doing all those cues, posteriorly tilting, it's hard. So regardless of your strength, your fitness level, it should be difficult, okay? And it's up to you to make it so. So these are the four exercises that are gonna address these three common root causes. And the first exercise, that's just like your Tylenol, just to get your pain level down a little bit so you can feel better. So what'd you think of this video? If you liked it, hit me up with a like, or if you have any comments about it, leave them down below, we'll check them out. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you'd like to move freely and without pain and you wanna keep up to date with us. And we've got some other videos. You can check out this one up here, another great exercise for the thoracic spine. This video shows some more stuff for the levator scap and make sure you check out our shoulder pain solution, which is a comprehensive progressive program to get you out of shoulder pain and to keep it that way for good. Thanks for watching and keep moving.